Okay, so this is a tutorial on the superior mesenteric artery. So we're looking here at a view of the abdominal aorta with the inferior vena cava sitting to the right. And you can see the celiac axis at the top and just below it you've got an artery coming off anteriorly and this is the superior mesenteric artery. So just a little bit further down um, coming off to the side we've got the inferior mesenteric artery. So first I'll talk a little bit about the relations of the superior mesenteric artery and then I'll talk about the branches. So the superior mesenteric artery supplies the midgut. So the midgut is the section of the intestine which runs from the uh, just below the major duodenal papilla to, to two-thirds of the way across the transverse colon. So what we can see here is that just above the superior mesenteric artery is the celiac artery and the celiac artery lies at the level of the upper border of L1 lumbar vertebra and the superior mesenteric artery lies at the lower border of L1 lumbar vertebra. So just underneath it you can see this vein and this is the left renal vein and this runs underneath the superior mesenteric artery and then you've got the superior mesenteric vein which runs alongside it just to the right of the just to the right of it and above the superior mesenteric artery is the splenic vein so the splenic vein is shown slightly out of place so it should be shown a little bit further down because it crosses anteriorly in front of the superior mesenteric artery just at, just about here so I've just brought some viscera in and you can see the pancreas sitting on top of it and again this is shown slightly out of place it should be shown a bit to the right of what it, sorry to the left of what it's shown here so the neck of the pancreas actually sits anteriorly over the superior mesenteric artery so also at the level of L1 you've got the renal arteries so you can see these arteries coming off the side of the aorta just a bit behind the um, superior mesenteric artery and one, one thing to point out also is that the inferior part of the duodenum, so the duodenum has this C shape, um, and the inferior part of the duodenum actually passes underneath the, um, the superior mesenteric artery. So the first branch that comes off the superior mesenteric artery is the inferior pancreatico-duodenal artery. And this, this anastomoses with a branch of the gastroduodenal artery, which comes off the common hepatic artery of the celiac axis. So if you watch the tutorial on the celiac axis then you'll see how these arteries anastomose. So the inferior pancreatico-duodenal artery is the first artery that branches off the superior mesenteric artery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to a diagram and show you the rest of the branches of the superior mesenteric artery. So we're looking here at a, a view of the superior mesenteric artery. So you've got the superior mesenteric vein running alongside it to the right, and you've got the pancreas sitting over on top of it. So you can see how these um, these vessels emerge just under the sort of neck of the pancreas. So the first branch you can see here, just after the superior mesenteric artery comes out from underneath the pancreas, is the middle colic artery. I'll come back to talk about the middle colic artery in a moment, but first we'll look at the vessels that come off the left side of the SMA. So you've got jejunal vessels and ileal vessels, and there's lots of these as you can see. And what you'll notice is that there's these arches or arcades, which are anastomoses between these, these vessels. So the vessels join together to form these arches or arcades, and you can see that there's a few sort of levels of these arcades. So if you've watched my tutorial on the peritoneal cavity you'll know that the small intestine is intraperitoneal. So the jejunal and the ileal vessels pass between the the two sheets of the mesentery and supply the small intestine. So you've got these these anastomoses for, forming these arcades and you've got several of these arches and just bef just right at the end distally you've got these straight vessels which supply the surface of the small intestine. So these straight vessels are called vasa recta so in Latin vasa means vessels and recta means straight 
So you've got vasa recta in the uh, kidney, and it just means straight vessels. So the distal vessels are called vasa recta. So we've taken a look at the blood supply to the jejunum and the ileum, and next we'll move distally and take a look at the next branch of the superior mesenteric artery. So this is called the iliocolic artery, and this is the most distal branch of the SMA. And as you can see here, it has two branches. So the iliocolic branch splits into an, a superior branch and an inferior branch. So the inferior branch is a bit more complicated because it has, it has four branches. But if you think logically of the structures in the right iliac fossa, then you'll be able to, to remember the names of the, uh, of the structures that the iliocolic artery supplies. So the inferior branch has four branches. So what's in the right iliac fossa? You've got the distal ilium, so that's supplied by the ileal branch. The, you've got the cecum next, which comes after the ilium, so that's supplied by the cecal branch. And you've got the appendix, which comes off here, so you've got the appendicular branch. And you've got um, at the start of the ascending colon, so you've got a colic branch. So the iliocolic artery has a superior branch, which ascends and supplies the ascending colon, but the inferior branch has four branches, which supply the distal ilium, the cecum, the appendix, and the start, the proximal ascending colon. So moving on to the ascending branch of the, sorry, the superior branch of the iliocolic artery, um, this supplies the ascending colon, and it anastomoses with, the, with a branch that comes off the next branch of the SMA. So if we look at, look, look at the next branch coming off the superior mesenteric artery, above the iliocolic artery, we've got the right colic artery. And this name pretty much describes what this artery does. So colic refers to colon, and right means it's on the right side. So the right side of the colon is the ascending colon. So the right colic artery vascularizes the ascending colon. And again, it's got two branches. So you've got a descending branch, which anastomoses with the superior branch of the iliocolic artery. And you've got an ascending branch, which ascends up and anastomoses with the, with the artery above it, which I mentioned at the start. So the middle colic artery has a branch which anastomoses with a branch from the right colic artery. So it's fairly simple. You've got a branch which goes up, so it's ascending, and you've got a branch which goes down, so descending. Um, so the right colic artery supplies the ascending colon. So next we've got the middle colic artery, which is the um, which emerges on on the SMA just after it passes um, through underneath the pancreas, and like the other two arteries, it splits into two branches, but these are left and right branches because they don't go up or down like the right colic branches or the um, iliocolic branches. They go left and right, so they're called left and right branches. So the right branch anastomoses with the ascending branch of the right colic artery, and the left branch anastomoses with branch which comes off the left colic artery and the left colic artery I'll come on to in a tutorial on the inferior mesenteric artery. So the middle colic artery um, supplies the proximal two-thirds of the transverse colon. So something to point out is that the transverse colon is an intraperitoneal structure. So the, the, the branches of the middle colic artery pass into the transverse colon sorry, transverse mesocolon, which uh, wraps around the transverse colon and tethers it to the back, to the posterior abdominal wall. The right colic artery, however, supplies the ascending colon, which you will know is a retroperitoneal structure. So the right colic, re sorry, the right colic artery goes retroperitoneal and supplies the ascending colon, but the middle colic artery works its way into the transverse mesocolon, because it's an intraperitoneal structure. 
So I've talked a lot about how these different vessels anastomose. So you've got anastomoses between the right colic, the middle colic and the left colic artery. And these these arteries form a margin around the 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 rim of the large intestine. So this this these edges of the arcs of these anastomosing arteries are called the marginal artery. So you've got this artery which lines the margin of the the large intestine and it's called the marginal artery.